Hey everyone, this is Nick Fitzke, and I'm here with a very quick instructional PowerPoint video today. We're going to take a look at how to make a PowerPoint, or how to make a sine wave, or a cosine wave in PowerPoint. And so it's really easy, uh, but I haven't seen a lot of YouTube videos that do it correctly in my opinion, and so uh, let's take a quick look. So here we have a blank PowerPoint slide, and again, most of the time when you see people do this on, on YouTube is they, you know, they set up a grid and they say, okay, let's just make it like this. And, and they'll do a better job than what I'm doing here because they're using a grid with maybe some snap objects. But ultimately, their results end up looking less than ideal. And so the real question is, how do we do this? And what might surprise you is that the appropriate way to do this is not in PowerPoint, but in Excel. And so we're just going to set up a really quick example here. And we're going to make a sine wave that goes from 0 to uh, 1080. All right, so that's going to give us a few periods to work with. And you can do this for any, any uh, amount of periods. You can do this for any function, really. Um, but remember, we're doing sine. And so we're going to do sine of that column, A1, in degrees. But remember, Excel uses radians, so we've got to, you know, do the conversion. And so the, the you know, it's divide by uh, 180 and multiply by pi, or divide by 360 and multiply by 2 pi. Uh, it really makes no difference. But since most of you are probably thinking 2 pi is 360 degrees, that might be the easiest way to do it. And so, okay, so now we've done this, and we've generated our function. And from here, we can create uh, a quick graph. And again, normally when I make graphs in oops, when I make graphs in Excel, uh, I I usually do a lot of changes. And here again, we're going to do a lot of changes, but but kind of in the opposite vein, All right? So normally I can't stand the fact that all of Excel's text labels are gray and there's other problems they have these grid lines we're basically deleting all of that right and again normally I don't don't like the fact that Excel doesn't use um, access titles but we don't care in this case because we just want this line and so now that we've got this line we need to do a couple of other things so that it'll look nice in PowerPoint we're going to format plot area and we're gonna set the fill to no fill uh, and we're going to do the same thing here. And so now we've basically stripped down this entire sine wave to just the curve. And you say, well, okay, that doesn't look so nice. But, but the cool thing is that you've got access to all of the tools that you have in PowerPoint here. So let's suppose you want to add a shadow. You can do that. You can go in and you can make it a gradient line if you really want to. Uh, and so we're not going to do all of that here, but we can do a basic gradient line, maybe make it a little bit uh, thicker so that we can actually see and appreciate the gradient. All right, so that's, that's one way to do it. Um, we can also add things like arrows, right? So if we really want to have an arrow, we can, we can add that. Uh, and so, you know, all the things that you might want to do in PowerPoint to a graphic that you do, draw in PowerPoint, you can do in Excel. And now we can basically copy and paste this graph. And we have a couple of options here. The first option is to just paste it in uh, as, you know, a standard Excel graph. And, and this actually allows me to right click on this and I can actually go into Excel or, or go into PowerPoint formatting. And if I want to change the thickness of the line or something like that, uh, I can still do that. Oh, I forgot one thing. So that's, that's another key feature in Excel. You've got to go here to Format Chart Area. And for whatever reason, the border is automatic. We want that to be no line. And so now that we've done that, we'll hit Copy. We'll delete this again. And we'll paste it. And now you can see I've lost that border around the edge. It's just the sine wave. Uh, I can also, though, go and I can paste it. And if I click on this little button down here, 
I can paste it as a picture. And that means that I lose the ability to edit the, t the uh, line shape and the, the line width and the gradient properties, but now it, it's, it's actually much faster uh, and in terms of Excel scaling. Like if I, if I make a whole bunch of these, you know, I'm gonna get some weird scaling artifacts and it might not show the whole thing. You can see it's kind of compressed there. But you know that's really the way if you want to maximize the control over your your sine wave or your cosine wave, to just you know paste it as an Excel object and then you can still edit it. But if you paste it as a picture now you can you can do it and you can um, you know keep keep it fast and it's not going to change scaling uh, as you shrink it or grow it or rotate it. Um, things might look kind of weird if you do it the other way. So that's really it for today. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys an idea on how to make sine waves and other types of functions easier to manage in PowerPoint. Uh, instead of using the PowerPoint tools, use Excel to generate the actual curve that you want to generate. And so that's it for now, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.